So here's the data. We've got it open up into Excel. The first row is the variable name. Beneath the variable name are the values themselves. We're going to turn this into a histogram. First way that we're going to do it is by using Excel's defaults. So I'm going to go into Data, Data Analysis, select Histogram. And then when that pops up, I have to specify an input range. I have to. And what that means is it's just the variable values. And then if I want to, I can specify a bin range. That would be the limits to the classes. I'm going to select on labels because if you look, we started out and I selected height and chart output. Hit OK. So here's the default histogram in Excel. I'm going to get rid of that and that. And this tells us some things. Um, note a couple features of this. One, it's the default. Two, the edges don't touch, but we can easily make the edges touch. I'm going to right click, format data series, gap width, <coughs> down to zero. That's one thing. Two, what do these numbers at the bottom actually mean? What is 58.42544553? Well, that's the lower bound of that first bin, or that first class. And 60.70891 is the lower bound of the second class, or the second bin. And those are odd choices. And by odd, I mean weird. Um, we're going to, the next option, I'm going to show you how to do this by specifying the bins yourself. Then, of course, there it says bins. We really should replace that with the name of the variable. And we can make that bigger and bigger. So there's the default. I can change the colors if I want. That's a nice color, I think. But the key to this is that the the bin starts are weird numbers. So the second part of this, I'm going to show you how to create histograms based on your own selected bins. In the previous part of this video, I showed you how to get a default histogram using Excel's functions. We saw that it was a nice looking histogram for the most part, except that the bin edges or the class edges didn't really make much sense. So I'm going to show you how to create class edges and a histogram from scratch. This is going to be height. And now I'm going to start with the lowest height, or maybe a little bit below that. And eventually I'm going to end up with the largest height, or maybe a little bit above that. So I need to figure out what that lowest height is. I'm going to go over here into my scratch area, and I'm going to use the min function min of a colon a, that gives me the smallest number in the a, row, uh, a column. And that's 58. So my first bin is going to start at 58. Now let's take a look at what the largest height is. Uh, max is a function. Again, a colon a gives me that a column. And the highest is 81. Pretty tall person. So eventually I'm going to have to end up at 82. And looking at what the book suggests versus what makes sense for this data um, gives us a little conflict. The book options are really good for defaults. However, if you have reason to choose different class sizes or class widths or class edges, you should do that. Because this histogram is supposed to tell the story of the data itself, not just some default outcome. So I'm going to go up by 2 every time until I get to 82. Now I can type 60, 62, 64, etc. Or I can use a formula to do this. Formulas in Excel start with equals. I'm going to do 2 more than the number above. Then I'll have to do is copy and paste. Control V will paste it. I went too far, so I'm just going to drop. And now, can go back to using Excel's, go back into data, 
data analysis, histogram. Again, the input range is where the data are. Now we've got a bin, so we can specify the bin ranges. Notice again, I'm also including height in that range. Labels, new worksheet, chart output, OK. So here's a better histogram. Again, we could select the width, uh, the gap width to zero. We could change the colors to, I don't know what color that is. Got to hit that button right. There we go. And there's a better histogram. Note that bottom is more. We probably should change that to 82. And notice when we change it over here, it automatically gets changed down there. Height, because that's in the A1 spot. Gonna make that larger. Actually make the whole thing a little bit larger so we can see it. Now we've also got the issue with Excel of this 58 is the lower end, 60s, the lower, 62s, the lower, 64s, the lower, etc. So this first bin is, I'm sorry, those are uppers. uppers. So this is, first bin includes everything below 58. And the second is from 58 to 60, including 58, but not 60. And this is everything between 60 and 62, including 60, not in, including 62, etc. Except for the last one, which is 82 and above. Now, that's the second way of doing it. Here's the third way. The first two ways relied on Excel's uh, built-in capabilities to create that histogram. This way we're going to do it by hand. And we're going to keep the bin widths that we had before. There's 58. I'm actually going to change this just to be clear. I'm going to make this bin read 58 less than 60. 58 to less than 60. And that kind of messes up all of the others because these are formulas. So all I have to do is go back down here. 60 to less than 62. 62 to less than 64. And I continued doing that. Uh, notice I labeled the first one, went back, relabeled it to be less than 60, and this one is 80 and above. So that's step one, determine those class classes. Step two is now we have to create a frequency table. How many of these in column A are less than 60? How many are between 60 and 62? Well, here's one way of doing it, and it's just sorting column A. So I'm going to click on height. I'm going to go up to sort and filter. Sort low to high. And there we go. Notice that this is actually 58.42. So I'm going to make these a little, give us a little bit more detail in terms of the numbers by clicking the number of decimal places or here to how many of these. I'm going to widen this just a little bit. So how many heights are less than 60? There's just one. How many are between 60 and 62? There's four. 62 to 64. There's seven. 64 to 66. There's 12. Notice it says 12R because I've got 12 rows selected. Or I can look down here at count and it says count is 12. 66 to 68. There are 23. And after doing all the counts, here's my frequency distribution. Now, a data set of size 100, this is a good process. It's easy, it's straightforward. You can see what you're, you're actually doing. If you've got a larger data set, you may want to use some of the functionality in Excel. Notice how, remember when we did min and max? Well, another helpful function is count if. 
And the first thing that you have to give it, the first slot, the first bit of information is the range of data. This is going to be from A2 to A101. And the second is criteria. Well, this criteria has to be less than 60, so we want to count everything if it's less than 60. So in quotation marks, less than equal I'm sorry, just less than 60. End quotation mark, and parenthesis. See that again for the next bin? Equal, count if, and the range again is A2 through A101. And the criteria in quotation marks, I want it between 60 and 62. So it's going to be less than 62. But I'm going to subtract off everything above it. And it's 4. This next one, count if. The range, A2 to A101, comma, quotation mark, has to be less than 64. But then we have to subtract off everything that we counted before. We have to subtract off that one, and we have to subtract off that one, etc. And of course, typing issues arise. It's a good way of checking to make sure that we counted correctly. And there we go. This last one is slightly different, just save time and energy. I counted it if it was greater than 80. Or I could have done greater than or equal to 80. So this one's the one that's the longest. Notice I'm counting column A. If it's less than 80, then I'm subtracting off this, which is H11, this, which is H10, this, which is H9, H8, H7, all the way back to H2. Notice that what we did formulaically, we were able to do just by counting. So both will get you to the same answer. It's just a matter of which is going to be faster. OK, so there's our frequency distribution. All we have to do is now create a histogram from that. So I'm going to highlight all that. Go into Insert. And I'm going to insert this chart. Make this a little bit bigger. Notice it's called a column chart. Now, of course, we can and we should. Oh, what are we doing? There we go. Gap width goes to zero. Filling it with an important color, maybe gold. I don't know if that's gold. And there's our histogram. So three ways we did this. Oh, we are missing a, a label down here. So we'll do a add chart element, axis title, primary horizontal, this is height in inches. So three ways of getting histograms. One is the default way, using Excel's functionality. Go into data, data analysis, histogram. Take the default bins. Second way is mostly the same. Go into data analysis, histogram, but specify the bins. Because the first way you didn't specify the bins, you got the default. Second way, specify the bins, you get something that looks nicer. Third way is to do it all by hand. That includes take the data, figure out what those bins are going to be, and do a frequency distribution for them. And then once you've done that, create a bar chart from that, or a column chart, and make it look like a histogram. And that's it. Those are the three ways of creating histograms in Excel. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Take care.